welcome to another TA Tech Tip. In this Tech Tip, we will review the different data acquisition types available in WinTest software. There are three types of data acquisition within WinTest. Time data, peak and valley, and level crossing. Depending on your test type, you may choose to collect one, two, or all three types of data collection simultaneously. Time data is the most commonly used type of data collection. It collects data at a specific sampling rate over a defined time window, continuously or with set intervals. Peak and valley data is another useful type of data collection, in which we collect just the maximum and minimums of each cycle for every cycle, or with set intervals between data points. Level crossing data type is useful for stress relaxation or creep tests, in which the collection of each data point is triggered by a user-defined data change of a specific channel resulting in data collection at a high sampling rate at the beginning of the test, but less and less data points as the sample relaxes or creeps and approaches equilibrium. To collect time data, the simplest way is to enable it within the waveform setup window. Time data can be collected either continuously at a factory defined sampling rate of 100 points per cycle for the entire duration of the test, or custom with a customized sampling rate and scan interval to further tailor the amount and frequency of data collected. Similarly, all cyclic waveforms will have the option to enable peak and valley data collection from within the waveform setup window in the same fashion, continuous or with custom settings. Level crossing data can be activated for tests programmed in the block waveform. First, we need to define the channels we want to collect data in a level crossing format. We do so by going to the Data Setup button and clicking on the Level Crossing File Setup. Check the channels of interest, such as Displacement and Load. Now, for each block row that we want to collect level crossing data on, double-click on the LC column and define the delta change for the channels you selected. Every time each signal changes by this amount, a data point will be collected on all channels. Then, click on Active. You can tailor the level crossing data settings for each block, or if you want to use the same settings for all remaining blocks, just click Continue. Notice that if you're running a block test protocol, you can also define time data and peak and valley data to each block step. For each row, double-click on the data type desired and fill in the desired data settings. One useful tip is to set a one second long scan time so that the number of points per scan equates to the sampling rate. An artificially long number of scans can be entered knowing that the data acquisition will jump to the next row upon completion of each block step. For continuous data collection, the time between scans should match the scan time. Activate the acquisition for all block steps that you want to collect time data on. And don't forget to set up the data setup for all types of data collection from within block waveform. If you enable all time data, peak valley data, and level crossing data collection, each data type will store in a separate file. For even more control over how to collect data, you can access and modify each data acquisition panel by clicking on the data acquisition tab. Here, you can further tailor data settings such as when to perform the first scan, duration of each scan, number of points per scan, total number of scans, how often to initiate a scan, and others. In this example with a one second scan time, in order to collect data continuously, I need to set a one second between scan start. Note that the settings on this window are populated by the settings inside of the waveform setup window. If you modify this window and then reopen the waveform setup window, these settings will be overwritten as soon as you exit the waveform setup window, even if you click Cancel. Also note that you must manually start data acquisition from this window. If you're not ready to start your test, simply click on Save, but remember to come back and click on Start immediately before starting your test. This is only true if you choose to use this advanced data acquisition window. If this box is checked, your data will automatically export at the end of the test. If unchecked 
or you want to re-export the data at a different time or a different file format, you can go to the Data Acquisition tab and navigate to Export Data for Group 1. Here, you can select all the information that you want appended to your data file. Let's review a few pieces of information. Export columns gives a first column with a cumulative number of points for all rows of data. Elapsed time is a time column. Export column labels will append a row with the column labels at the end of each scan. If you only want the column labels to appear at the top, uncheck this row. Mover counts will also append the number of cycles at the beginning of each scan. Uncheck if you want continuous, uninterrupted rows of data. Waveform info is added at the header of the data file and outlines the test protocol that was run for this data file. Lastly, tuning info and data acquisition info is also appended at the header of the data file and provides the tuning parameters used for each control channel and the data acquisition settings of each data file. Check the CSV box if you want to export in a comma-separated value file format or uncheck it if you prefer to export in a text file. Save, and these settings will be used on your next exported data file. In this tech tip, we've reviewed the different data acquisition types available in Winter Software. Please stay tuned for more useful tips from TA Instruments, and thank you for your interest.